Welcome to the podium. We are here for the NCAA March Madness post-game press conference featuring the University of Southern California. Just a few reminders for media. If you have a question for Isaiah White, who is joining us here first, please go ahead and raise your hand. I would ask you to please identify yourself by name and affiliation when you're asking your question of him. And if you do have that question, please go ahead and throw that hand up using that raise hand function in the Zoom. We're going to start with Dylan Hernandez from the Los Angeles Times. Dylan, if you could please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Isaiah. Um, you know, as well as you guys are playing right now, how confident are you that you guys can not only play with Gonzaga, but, but beat Gonzaga in the next round? Um, I don't know um, about what everyone, what everyone else is saying. All I know is that um, this team is special, and, you know, we believe we can be anybody. So um, we're going to play our game. Um, we're going to listen to what the game plan is, and, and we're going to execute. All right. Next up, we have Rich Rubin. Rich is with the We Are SC. Rich, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Isaiah, congratulations. Um, when did you know that you were really in a zone tonight and, and the ball was going to go in? Uh, probably after the end one. After the end one, I get to um, screaming and feeling myself, then I knew it was going to be a good game. <laughs> All right, next question comes from Adam Grossbard with the OC Register. Adam, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Isaiah, you know, this team came together so quickly over the off season. Like, what is it about this team that it was able to, you know, really come together despite all the different new parts and reach the Elite Eight? Um, I'm not sure, probably just um, how everyone doubted us. Um, once we found out that we were ranked or they, they had us at like sixth in the Pac-12, I think we really came together like um, just to prove everyone wrong. So um, when everyone doubted us, I think we, we, we really uh, uh, lashed on to each other and, um, and grinded. All right. I would remind media, if you do have a question, please feel free to use that raise hand feature. Next, we're going to turn to Ryan Karchi. With the LA Times, Ryan, I apologize if I didn't get your name right. Please unmute and ask your question. Isaiah, through this tournament, you know, against Drake in Kansas, you guys held them to 29% from the field. Oregon was only a little bit better at 34%. What's it been about your guys' length and just defensive effort that has really turned up over these last few games? Um, the energy of March Madness, the crowd, um, and we know what's at stake. It's do or die. So. Um, everyone is just going out there and laying it all out on the floor. All right. Our next question comes from Ryan Young with Trojansports.com. Ryan, please unmute and ask your question. Isaiah, when you made the decision to transfer to USC, what did you realistically think the season would become for you and for the team? Um, I wasn't sure. Um, I just knew that they had we had talent coming in with Evan Mobley and a couple of grad transfers. Um, I knew that we had winners on the squad already from last year. And um, I knew Coach Andy and, and the coaching staff were, were a good coaching staff. So um, I was just excited and I was just ready to learn. All right. Our next question comes from Shotgun Spratling. Shotgun Spratling is with the USCfootball.com. Shotgun, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Isaiah, it seemed like the other guys were a little anxious early in the game. Did you feel like you needed to take it upon yourself to early, you know, when you got a couple of those baskets to go? Um, of course. Um, when we start off the game, I feel like um, the team feeds off my energy, so I make sure um, out the gate I come with that energy and um, come with that heart, and hopefully it makes everyone else comfortable, and then we just get to play in our game. All right, if anyone in the media has a question, please use the raise hand feature. I'm going to turn now to Adam Spillane. Adam, if you could please identify the organization you're with and ask your question. Thank you. Hi, I'm with uh, AP Radio. Uh, Isaiah, what does it mean for this program to be able to get to this stage? It um, means a lot. We were overlooked a lot. Um, I know it's been a minute since you know the USC program has gotten to the Elite Eight. Um, so we're making history, and, it, you know, it just means a lot to this program. 
And um, as a team, we're just super excited and, you know, we worked for this. So I'm glad that it's paying off. We're going to circle back with Adam Grossbard. Adam with OC Register, please ask your question. Isaiah, after you hit the go-ahead three in the first half, it looked like you turned and looked at the Oregon bench. Just what kind of message were you trying to send with your first half play? Um, that we just weren't backing down. Um, we came out kind of flat, and they were kind of leaving us open or leaving certain people open, and um, we just weren't. We, we, I, I just want to let let them know that we weren't letting down. Like we were, we were going to come at you, or come at whoever, and we were going to um, keep battling. That's what we did. All right, we're going to also circle back with Ryan Young from Trojan Sports. Ryan? I know it just happened and you're in the moment, but do you have any immediate perspective on just what this means to you personally in the big picture? This is a moment you're always going to have the rest of your life. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just living in the moment. I'm not sure. I can't even <laughs> – I don't, I don't know. I'm just having fun and – I'm um, enjoying right now. Uh, I'm not even thinking about that right now. All right, we're going to have two more questions. Next up, we're going to go back to Shotgun Spratling. Shotgun? Isaiah, what has this NCAA tournament brought out in this team as a whole? I mean, it just seems like everyone's playing with a ton of confidence. Everyone's shooting the ball well. What is it about this, this setting and this environment that's made you guys you know, really lock in the way you have? Um, I think the energy. I mean, I think the, the energy from the crowd. Um, all year we didn't have a crowd, um, so we had to make our own energy, and that's kind of tough, um, especially for players like me who um, thrive off of energy. So I think the crowd and um, just being in March Madness and um, knowing that you know this could be your last game, I think everyone is just buying in and, and doing what it takes um, as a team to, to, to move forward. Our last question for you, Isaiah, comes from Rich Rubin, We are SE. Rich? Hey, Isaiah, um, is, is this the best game of your career? Uh, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. All right. Well, thank you, Isaiah White. Welcome to the Elite Eight. Thank you. We're going to be joined by Coach here in just a few minutes. If the media would go ahead and take this opportunity, if you have questions for Coach, to raise your hand. We thank you, Isaiah. Have a great evening. Thank you. Welcome to the podium here at Bankers Life, Coach. We have Coach Andy Enfield, join, Enfield joining us. We appreciate your time this evening. We're going to start with an opening statement. In the meantime, media, if you do have a question, feel free to go ahead and raise your hand. Coach? Well, it was a great win for us. Oregon's just an outstanding team. They were playing so well. I think they won 11 out of 12. We thought they were a top 10 team in the country. So congratulations first to uh, Coach Altman and their players. They had a terrific season. It was a little unfortunate that we had to play a Pac-12 opponent, but uh, the nice thing is we were both here in the Sweet 16, and I thought our team played exceptionally well tonight uh, against a, a very good basketball team. All right, our first question this evening is going to come from Adam Grossbard. Adam Grossbard's with OC Register. Adam, if you could please unmute. Andy, it seemed like a very subdued celebration from the team as, you know, for winning in the Sweet 16. What does that say just about the focus these guys are playing with and how they're not, you know, getting too ahead of themselves. Well, it's a big moment in USC basketball. It's our second Elite Eight in the last 60 years, 2001, and obviously now. So it's a huge win for our players, our program. Uh, but at the same time, our players, uh, they, uh, they're very mature. Uh, they do celebrate and they have fun. Uh, but we, uh, we have another game to play on Tuesday and we'll go give it our best shot. Our next question from, comes from the LA Times, Ryan Cartridge. Ryan? 
Andy, I know you built this team kind of with defense in mind, but does it feel like over these last three games, you know, it seems like even everything else is coming together around that defense? Well, we're top five in the nation in defense, but we're also top 15 in the, in the nation in offense. So if you look at our metrics, uh, we are a good offensive basketball team. Obviously, we make threes. We're even better. Uh, we've been shooting the ball well in this tournament, which is great to see. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're def defense first. Our players understand that, and that's how we've been able to have 25 wins this year. It's uh, defense first and uh, offense. Uh, we have to move the ball and make open shots. Next up, we have Rich Rubin. Rich with We Are SE. Please ask your question. Uh, Andy, congratulations. Um, why did you choose to play a zone, and were you surprised at how effective it was in the first half? Well, we started out the game man-to-man. -man. They have five forwards and guards. They went small ball to start the game. They were making some threes. We have trouble. We, we have two bigs in the game with uh, Chavez, Isaiah, and Evan at all times. So it's hard to guard those guys all over the perimeter. And we didn't want to start switching their ball screens. And Amarui was pop. He, he could pick and pop. He, he got off to a good start. So the zone at least kept Evan uh, in the middle of the lane. And our, our guards and forwards, he got to their shooters. All right, next up, we turn to Dylan Hernandez with the LA Times. Dylan? Hi, Andy. Uh, looking ahead to Tuesday, uh, obviously Gonzaga, top team in the country. Uh, that said, I think we've seen your team gaining confidence kind of going throughout, you know, as you progress in this tournament. Uh, how much confidence do you feel like your team will be having going in to that game Tuesday that you guys can knock off Gonzaga? Well, Gonzaga is an exceptional team, and both teams are playing well, so I guess we'll, we'll see on Tuesday. Next question comes from Trojansports.com. We have Ryan Young. Ryan? Andy, you mentioned the historical significance. How much did you talk about that with your team this week? And even though you still have more to go here, can you put in perspective what impact you think this is already going to have on the program moving forward? We haven't even thought about that, but I did make a statement that this is the second elite in the last 60 years for USC basketball. This is a huge win for our program. Uh, I, I think uh, as we built this thing uh, with Jason Hart, associate head coach, and Chris Capco and Curtis Schultz, they've been with me all eight years, and the other staff members like Coach Mobley. And uh, we, we just had a, a we have a terrific uh, co assistant coaching staff that have, have tried to uh, build pro build teams year after year and. and uh, and develop players, and I'm so proud of our coaches. Uh, I'm only as good as a head coach as my staff, and of course our players. And uh, when we only had three returning players this year, we had a lot of work to do. So this team was built uh, with transfers, graduate transfers, freshmen, and some returnees, and they meshed together. And so my assistant coaches deserve a ton of credit for this. All right, next up, we have Shotgun Spratling with USCFootball.com. Shotgun? Andy, what did Tajidi's shot to end that 11-0 run mean for you guys? Well, we missed uh, Evan missed the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. I think we missed another easy shot. So that was a big three for him. I think we were down at down at, the, the lead was down to nine. He put it back to 12. And then we got one more stop, and it kind of sealed the game. So it was a big shot for him. All right, next up, we're going to turn to Adam Spillane. Adam is with AP Radio. Adam? Andy, uh, they got off to a good start. Uh, early on, how did you guys flip the game on them? Well, Oregon, I thought, was playing a, like a top 10 team in the country. So th they got off to a good start because they're a really good basketball team. They're exceptional offensively. Uh, and they spread the floor. They have five forwards and guards. They can all shoot to three. They can all drive and kick out. So uh, they, they made some shots early. And then we had to switch the zone. I don't think we could guard this team man-to-man -man when, when they go five guards, unless they put their big in and, and, they, and their big centers only play limited minutes. So... I went, when they're small, I, I didn't think we'd guard them man-to-man -man and win the game. So that's why we went to the zone. Next up, Adam Jasper. Adam, if you could, for Coach Enfield, identify your organization and ask your question. Hi, this is Adam Jasper from the Daily Trojan. I was just going to ask, um, what about this game um, and the way you navigated it um, indicated that you would need to switch from zone to man-to-man? -man? Like what, what, what went into that thought process? Well, I, I kind of just touched on that. When they had small ball in there, meaning they had all those guys, five guys that could shoot the three and spread the floor out, they were playing a five-out offense, and we have two bigs in our so, – so the last thing we want to do is have 
Evan and Isaiah Mobley and Chavez chasing their guards, start switching everything on the perimeter and bringing our bigs away from the basket. So the zone kept Evan in the middle. Uh, when Chavez came in, it kept uh, Chavez or Isaiah in the middle. And then we uh, rotated accordingly, depending on how we were playing the zone. We switched it up, uh, how we uh, played the wings and also our rotations in the zone. I thought our guys did a great job. Next up, we have Mark Colkin. Mark is with USC Scoop. If you could please unmute and ask your question. Uh, congratulations, Coach. Tremendous win. You, you touched on, on the confidence level the team's playing with right now. And outside of that, maybe five-minute stretch in the second half, uh, how much better can this team play? Well, we're 25-7, and seven, so I, I guess uh, you know, we, we uh, have been pretty consistent all season. Uh, we are playing very well right now. Uh, we're making shots and playing exceptional defense. Uh, we just held three very good teams to, to uh, pretty low numbers from the field. I think uh, I, I'm sure I don't have a stat sheet in front uh, of me, but the last two games, uh, Drake and Kansas shot 29% for the game from the field, and tonight they probably shot a little more because they got so many offensive rebounds late. Uh, but we, we played three really good offensive basketball teams, and so defensively we're playing at a very high level, and uh, offensively, as I said, we're top 15 in the nation in offense as well, and I think our offense, uh, since we shared the ball and we're making some open shots, it's opened the floor up for everybody. Our next question comes from Mark Wicker. Mark, if you could please unmute and identify your organization. Thank you. Hi, Mark Wicker, Orange County Register. When you go back over the season, the evolution of the zone, not just tonight, but as you've started putting it in during practice and during the first part of the season, how encouraged were you about whether it was going to be this type of weapon and when, when did it really turn the corner for you? Well, Mark, it's a good question uh, because we did put the zone in in training camp. We probably played uh, over 90% man throughout the season. If you look at our, our numbers, the last three games we had to go to the zone. We, we, we played three very similar teams, Drake, Kansas, and or, Oregon. A couple break opportunities, a couple open threes. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, well, anyway, I'll finish this, what I was saying. We played three similar teams, meaning they, they had four guards or forwards at least, sometimes five in the game where they tried to dribble drive us, they shoot a lot of threes. So we went to zone in this tournament out of necessity because we're big. Uh, we, 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 uh, I, don't, I don't like going small too often because I think our defense is much better when we stay big, and, and that's proven out throughout the season. But our man-to-man -man defense has been terrific most of, most of the year, uh, but I, I think we've gone to the zone out of necessity here. So we played 90% man the entire season. Now we probably, we're playing more zone here in the NCAA tournament because of the matchups we have and, and how we have to guard these shooters. We're going to go back to Adam Grossbard with the register for another question. Adam? Andy, you mentioned just like how this team was put together during the off season with the transfers and freshmen and just kind of almost starting from scratch. Like, what has it been like for you as a coach to watch this team grow together and now really peaking at, at the exact right time? Well, really proud of our players. They, they uh, uh, to, to have such an unusual team meaning we only had three returnees, and to have everybody, we didn't meet these guys until school started in August, late August, if you remember. We had COVID restrictions, and, and we couldn't even bring them on campus and couldn't, could not work them out. So to have guys believe in our program says a lot from the players before us because we were an established program. They believed that they come, could come and help us this year with the opportunity of only three returnees. So everybody we recruited, uh, we, we could say, you're gonna, you, you'll probably get some playing time because we don't have anybody else on our team. So they took a chance to come here, and unfortunately, we were not able to meet with their parents, their families, and them. Uh, we didn't meet our players until late August. We, we recruited them. We had a telephone and via Zoom. Uh, so one, once training camp started, we had to figure out the strengths and weaknesses because we just didn't know. We had never coached these guys before. So we, we switched a lot of things defensively and, and offensively to try to use our strengths because we had a brand new team. And our players bought in. They, play, they bought in defensively first. They're very mature. They're a lot of fun to be around. And we enjoy, it's hard, it does, doesn't happen um, too often, but it's hard to think of a day that we didn't enjoy going, walking into the gym and practicing and, and uh, getting after it this year because our players bring energy. They're, they're, uh, they they uh, compete. We have very hard practices, but they're also so much fun to be around. So, so I can't say enough about this team, how they come together, the leadership they've shown, and how hard they work. And I think you've, you're seeing the, 
uh, that in the tournament here. Uh, they're playing really well together, and they cheer for each other, and they play both well on both ends of the court. We're going to go with just three more questions, circling back with Ryan Young from Trojan Sports. Ryan? Andy, can you share some perspective on kind of the moment Isaiah White came on your radar when you were looking at transfer targets and then the potential you saw in him at that time? Well, he went to Damien High School, which is in California. In fact, we have another player that we signed, Malik uh, Thomas, coming in next year from Damien. It's a powerhouse. And he went to, uh, Isaiah had a little unusual road. Uh, he went to a junior college and went to Utah Valley. Uh, he, he got married, had, uh, just had a, his first baby. Uh, so he's a father. Uh, and, and what a wonderful young family they have. I'm, I'm so proud of him to come here to graduate school and, and have a young family. And, it, and I know his wife and, and his uh, baby, uh, they, they mean so much to him. So I, I think uh, to, to, to see that. Uh, so when, when he came on our radar, as I said, we had three returning players in April. And we said, wow, well, we don't even have enough to put five on the court. So we had to get after it in the, in the transfer market, at least evaluate. And what we, what we noticed is we knew he was from California. He was a really good person. Uh, we, we did a lot of research on him, talked to about 10 or 15 people, and, and they all just raved about him as, as a quality individual. And, and uh, uh, he, he's, been, he's exceeded all our expectations. He's just, he's just a, the energy guy, and, and, and what, a, what a nice young man. And I think you just talked to him here uh, before me. And uh, uh, I'm just, we're, we're all just so proud of him. Next question, Shotgun Spratling. Shotgun, could you please unmute? Andy, uh, talking about Isaiah, he's been an energy guy for you all season, but what changes when he scores like he did tonight? Well, I finally got a stat sheet. He was 8 for 10 from the field, 4 or 5 from 3, had 22 points. Against Kansas, he was great as well. Uh, when he scores, that, that's, we're a whole different team. When, when we can make threes, uh, we made 11 against Kansas, made 10 tonight. When we can shoot the ball at this level, we're tough to beat. Uh, I think some of our losses this year, we've been very inconsistent from the perimeter. And uh, we're, we're shooting the ball well as a team right now. So he, he's a big part of that. Coach Enfield, the last question is going to come from Adam Spillane with AP Sports. Adam? Andy, you talked about having to use the zone out of necessity. How have you seen that improve over these three games? Well, we're getting better at it. Uh, we, we haven't used it a lot lately, and we do practice it, but we, we didn't practice zone for well over a month until probably right before the tournament. We knew Drake or Wichita State. we probably have to play a little zone. Uh, uh, we didn't expect to play that much, uh, but uh, – we uh, we got better and better here this week because we played it so much in these three games. Um, and uh, uh, on, you know, as I said, we played about 90% man throughout the entire season. I do want to mention Thanks. one. I, I want to mention one thing here. Uh, you know, Evan Mobley was our fourth leading scorer tonight, but he had six assists. And against Kansas, he was our fifth leading scorer, and he had five assists. So that just goes to show you how unselfish Evan Mobley is and what a great player he is. He takes what the defense gives. He has confidence in his teammates. And, and that goes uh, throughout the whole team. Uh, he, he leads us with that. Uh, when, when, you're, when you're most talented offensive player is your, your most unselfish and willing passer, uh, you, you can win a lot of games like that. Coach Enfield, thanks for joining us at the podium here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse tonight. Welcome to the Elite Eight. Thank That's you. That's going to wrap it up for the postgame press conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com backslash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at NCAA.baritone.com. Thanks for joining us from Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Have a wonderful evening.